Google Opal just destroyed NADN and Lovable. Just kidding, but this is an interesting product release and let's chat about it honestly. So what is Google Opal? Google refers to it as an experimental tool for building and sharing AI mini apps. Think of this like NADN mixed with Lovable, but for really non-technical people. And this is just for the Google ecosystem. So basically all the AI apps that Google's made. After researching it, it really does have potential. And in this video, I'm gonna test it out and give you my honest take. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so this is what it looks like inside of Google's Opal. And you'll see on the left-hand side, we actually have this canvas-like drag and drop user interface, kind of similar to NADN. We have different kind of modules here. We have the collect URL module. We have extract video transcript for the specific app that we have here. And you can see on the right-hand side, we have our app. So not only do we have a workflow, we have a workflow turned into like a working app. So this is why in the intro to this video, I was discussing how this is similar to NADN mixed with Lovable, but not as dynamic. And we don't have as many customizable options here, but it's really low barrier for entry for being able to build web apps and custom workflows that turn into apps, as you can see on the right-hand side. So right here, I'm in the editor tab. If I click on app, you could see we now have this entire app here. And this was a pre-existing app made by one of the users. Let me go ahead and play around with this. And then I'm gonna show you exactly how we could go ahead and build our own app using a prompt. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what I think of this compared to platforms like N8N, Lovable, Bolt, and all these different competitors out there. So as you can see, we have this prompt to start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop in a YouTube URL and it's basically gonna help us learn from a YouTube video. So I'm not sure what that looks like, but let's go ahead and do that now. All right, let's go ahead and grab this YouTube video here where I basically break down ChatGPT agent and that release. So let's learn from this. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna take this back over to our app. All I need to do is paste that in. And now it looks like it's actually gonna extract the video transcript. Now when I go over to the editor, you can now see what it's doing. So it's collecting the URL, it's extracting the video, which it looks like, or it's extracting the video transcript, which it looks like it did. It says analyze educational content, generate quiz. It's gonna generate this quiz and then it's gonna turn this into a display report, which is essentially our user interface of our mini app. So we can actually see this in action going ahead and doing this. If I come back over to the app, you can see it's still extracting this transcript. We can see it's now moved on to this step in the process. It's generating the quiz after analyzing the educational content. And it's now going to build us this app on the right-hand side. Let's give it a second. While this is still loading, one thing I want to mention is this was all built from a text prompt. So in order for us to do this, you just give it a simple text prompt and it will go ahead and spin this up in literally seconds which is pretty cool. Instead of having to go through and manually actually adding each of these different modules for our workflow or for our little mini app. Oh, and there we go. We have on the right-hand side, our app. It took probably in total, maybe two minutes to actually do this. So let me go ahead and let's play with this and see how this works. So I'm gonna drag this over. It looks like I can click on this to actually watch the video, but it is ChatGPT agent interactive report. So let's go ahead and use this. Looks like it actually shows the educational content breakdown. So it talks about the first part of the video and introducing ChatGPT agent, shows the different use cases that I had for the video of actually testing out, you know, ChatGPT agent. So it's showing automated email and brand deal evaluation, demonstration, shows the outcome here, key learning points. So it's almost like our custom interactive app that, you know, just shows us user interface, you know, breakdown of the video. And then we have an interactive quiz here, which is pretty cool. The fact that I just uploaded a URL. And question number one, what two core functionalities does the video state are combined in ChatGPT agent to make it extremely interesting? So since I did this, I know that this is deep research and operator. Move on to next question. And let me go ahead and answer all of these. All right, so you can see I scored five out of six on this quiz. So that's a cool little app that somebody built using Opal. Let's go ahead and try to actually build our own app now. Back on the homepage, here's what we see. We can see the different galleries here. This is the one that I actually went ahead and played around with there for that use case. And then we could just click on create new. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Next up, we are presented with this right here. You can see we have this prompt that says, let's build your app, take a look at our demo video. and basically Basically, we just type out what we're trying to build. So I'm gonna give it this prompt. All right, so here is my prompt. Basically, I'm saying build an app that creates AI video ads with your product and target audience. The user will give product name and uploads three images of the product. Then the app generates video marketing material using VO3 for the product. So basically, it's gonna be using VO3, which is Google's video generation model, and actually generate a video for us for marketing material. And I basically added along with the image gen images. So we actually have video and image assets for our marketing. I'm going to send that off to Opal and wow. 
Just about 10, 15 seconds later, it comes up with this entire editor. This is a workflow. This is pretty sweet. So it looks like we have product name, product image number one, product image number two, product image number three. And we could move these around actually, but these nodes are all connected. Then we'll move to generate video script using these uh, inputs here, generate image instructions. And if I click on each of these, you could see that I can actually see the prompt that is actually given inside of each of these. So instead of us having to go in, actually generate the prompts for each of these different steps steps here, such as like generating the image or generating the video script or the actual video, it goes ahead and creates the prompts for us. So we don't even need to do this. This literally just allows us to write in a single sentence or a little basic prompt and it'll go ahead, generate the workflow for us and then turn that workflow into an application. This is pretty cool to actually play around with. Wow. One thing I want to mention is it even went ahead and added this right here, which I didn't even ask it to add, which is creating marketing ad page. So it looks like it's actually going to create like an example of a website for us to actually use for the marketing marketing material that we created using our mini app. So I uploaded all three of those images. You can see our workflow now actually in the process of working. It looks like it's actually, you know, generating a video script. It's generating the marketing video material. It's generating image, generating additional images, and then actually creating that marketing page. Looks like it actually connected to other different nodes, but that's pretty interesting. So one thing to note is we have our preview over here, but we could also come over to the console. You know, we could see all these different parts of our workflow. You could see the video script that was used. So here's the output. This is the, you know, the output that was used for the prompt in order for us to actually generate the video with the script as well as the images. So if we want to see that information, we could actually see that in the console here. Let me look at the preview now. So interesting. That's, you know, pretty similar to the light bar that I showcased. It's not the exact same, but you know, giving Google VO3 pretty solid. That's definitely pretty cool. And it's actually showing different marketing material here with, you know, you could see examples of the light bar in action. That's pretty cool. Nothing too insane. That's why, you know, I didn't want to like hype up Opal right off the bat. I think there is quite a bit of potential here. This is really cool that we're able to do this, but here is one use case. Let's go ahead and talk about some other use cases and play around with it a little bit more. One last thing before moving on to some more use cases is I was playing around with this a little bit on the user interface. And one thing I noticed is inside of this step here, you could see it has this little tool thing. So it actually has access to different tools. This is pretty cool. So we could actually have access to search the web, search Google maps, get a web page, get the weather. There's not too many tools here. I imagine this product could get pretty sweet when there's you know, a bunch of different tools and, you know, utility for this, but it does have access to actually search the internet. So I guess that could be useful if we're actually wanting to, you know, have this do some deep research using something like their deep research with Gemini 2.5, which, you know, we have access to all these different models, Gemini 2.0 flash, 2.7 flash, Gemini 2.5 pro image gen four. We have VO three. We have the ability to actually generate. We also have the ability to generate audio and speech from audio LLM. So all these things integrate directly with the product. That's one thing about this is it's not like n and n where you could tie it to all these different applications. It looks like it's only for the Google ecosystem applications right now. All right. So this next use case is pretty cool. And I think you're going to get a kick out of it. So we've probably seen all these AI ASMR knife cutting videos that are, you know, like pieces of fruit or something that are being cut in their like glass cutting ASMR. So basically what I came to Opal and said is I basically said, create an app that allows a user to give a text prompt in order to generate an AI ASMR knife cutting video, always output three three different AI generated videos. So the user can pick and choose which one they like the best. Imagine we just give a simple prompt and instead of going to VO3 and explaining all these and doing, you know, having to generate three different videos, it just will automatically generate three different ones for us. That is the app we're going to build. So let's just send that off to Opal and it's going to begin building our mini app here. All right. So now we have our workflow for our mini apps. So we have text prompt, then it will go to generate the video prompt, generate the video clips, and then present videos as a web page. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and now look at our preview of our app. Let's click on start and let's just basically explain what we're trying to generate here. All right, so my prompt is glass banana being cut with a knife in ASMR style. So I get to give it like a monkey prompt, like something that's very simple and it's gonna actually go ahead and probably optimize that prompt, I would assume, before generating it for us. So here we go. As we know, it's gonna go ahead and run this and we're gonna see it actually going through this workflow and you know actually doing each of these steps here. So like I said, we figured it was gonna actually optimize our prompt for us. It came up with this output output here. So, you know, it looks very detailed and hopefully this is actually going to generate a pretty cool video given that we only gave it a really simple prompt. Boom. And just like that, we have a very bas basic app here with all three of our different outputs. So let's take a look at these. Nice. That's kind of exactly what we're looking for. Let's look at the second one.
Interesting. So there we have it. This is what actually built us in literally one simple prompt. All right, so there we have it. That is Google Opal. So what are my thoughts on this? Is this something that will replace N8N? Is it gonna replace Lovable? You know, I made the joke at the beginning that this destroys these platforms. It definitely is not gonna do that, but it's, this is interesting. The fact that we have a product like this from Google now that actually integrates all of their products they have, whether that is ImageGen, VO3, all of their different products and give you the ability to create a workflow with it that turns turns into a mini web app. What is a mini web app that Google refers to? I'm not too sure. I think this is pretty cool to play around with. I think it has a bit of potential. I think right now it's more so just like a novelty item. It's pretty fun to play around with. I thought it was cool playing around with the AI ASMR feature. That was pretty cool. We were able to build a quick little app instead of having to use VO3 myself or generating an N8N automation to do that. That is my breakdown on the new Google Opal. I hope you guys got some value from this video. Let me know if you're gonna use it in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel to see more things AI for non-techies. I cover all AI tools that you can use for your life or for your business. I stay up to date with all of these things coming out on a day-to-day -day basis. That being said, guys, thanks for staying to the end and I'll see you guys in the next one.